Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. We're going to rank the 10 most popular diets based on the ability to increase testosterone, muscle, and performance. Number one, let's start with the pescatarian diet. So that's an all fish or mainly fish diet. I'm going to put it in B tier and that's mainly because it gives you plenty of high quality protein, plenty of good quality fats, especially omega-3s, which a lot of you guys are deficient in. It gives you a decent amount of vitamins and minerals. But the reason why it's not higher is because it does not give you enough carbohydrates, enough nutrient-dense carbohydrates, which are crucial for performance, especially if you train a lot, you're very active, you exercise a lot. It gives you a decent amount of zinc, but not as much as I prefer, and it is not sustainable long-term, right? You want to pick diets that are sustainable for the rest of your lifetime. So I'm going to put that in B tier. Next, a vegan diet for testosterone, I'm going to put that in C tier. And the only reason why it's not lower is because it does check a lot of the items on the box, right? So it gives you good quality vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, a decent amount of nutrient-dense carbohydrates and fiber, but it does not give you enough high-quality protein unless you eat a crap ton of various soy products and beans and things like that. You really got to be very careful when you're on a vegan diet if you're trying to get high-quality protein. It does not give you a high zinc to fight a ratio, right? So you, so the little zinc that you actually get from the diet is not going to be properly absorbed because of the high phytic acid content of the vegan diet. It is not sustainable long term and it does not give you enough high quality fats. You're going to get some MUFAs, right? You're going to get some monosaturated fats, but you're not going to get enough saturated fats. And you might get some omega-3s depending on how careful you are with your planning. So I don't like diets like that, right? That are too restrictive and I require way too much attention to detail in order for you to be optimal next the standard bodybuilder diet right the chicken broccoli and rice diet i'm gonna put that in c tier right it's horrible right it's it's destroyed the health of so many men right so number one it does not give you enough vitamins minerals antioxidants believe it or not the basic chicken broccoli and rice diet is very deficient in micronutrients you're gonna get some but not others you're not getting enough zinc and you're not getting enough high quality fats right because it tends to be very low in fat you guys got to remember that the popular bodybuilder diet is mainly for people who are on steroids they don't need as much nutrient density as you do because they're not producing their own testosterone they're injecting it right so they could eat a very low fat diet they could eat a very low zinc diet they could eat a diet that's deficient in key vitamins minerals and antioxidants because again they do not have to worry about testosterone production endogenously next we have the paleo diet aka the caveman diet so let's see you're getting plenty of high quality protein you're getting some high quality fats you're getting vitamins minerals and antioxidants and you're also getting plenty of zinc the only issue is again you're not getting a high amount of nutrient dense carbohydrates which is going to impair performance if you're very active so i'm going to put that in a tier Next, we have a keto diet, very low carb, high protein, high fat. So let's say you're getting a lot of protein, you're getting a lot of fats. You are getting plenty of bioavailable zinc since you're not eating a lot of phytic acid. The only issue is it is not sustainable and obviously you're not getting a lot of nutrient dense carbohydrates, right? And it's kind of iffy on the vitamins, minerals and antioxidant side, right? You're going to have to supplement a lot uh, to cover those holes. And again, a diet where you have to supplement in order for it to work is obviously your crappy diet. So I'm going to put in B tier. I'm tempted to put in C tier, but I'll put in B tier. Got to be objective. Next, intermittent fasting. Guys, intermittent fasting is not really a diet. It's just a structured way of eating your diet, right? So you could do intermittent fasting with a vegan diet, a carnivore diet, a keto diet, right? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very hard to, to rank intermittent fasting because, again, it depends on what you're actually eating. So I'm just going to put in B tier, right? It depends, right? If you're doing intermittent fasting with a diet in the A tier category, then that's going to go in A tier. If you're doing intermittent fasting with a vegan diet, then it's going to go in C tier, right? So I'm going to put that right there in the middle. Next, you have a carnivore diet. Let's see, you're getting plenty of protein. You're getting plenty of fats, except for omega-3s. You're getting a ton of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Again, except for the ones that you can only get in, in plant foods. So that's already two red flags. You're not getting enough nutrient-dense carbohydrates to fuel performance, um, but you are getting plenty of zinc, right? And last but not least, it's not sustainable long-term, right? It's not, unless you have medical conditions that require you to eliminate uh, entire macro groups, it's not sustainable long-term. So I'm going to put that in B tier, right? There's too many red flags, like I said earlier. There's a lot of nutrients that you can only get from plant foods, in high amounts, that is. So everyone is overhyping carnivore diets, but if you look deeply, you find out that one, they're either on TRT, so you don't count, and two, 
they used a lot of supplements, which once again, if you have to supplement with things other than vitamin D, then your diet is obviously trash. Next, you have a Mediterranean diet. So let's see, you're getting a lot of protein, enough protein. You're getting fats, high quality fats, plenty of omega-3s, plenty of monounsaturated fats. You're getting vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. You're getting a lot of carbohydrate, nutrient-dense carbohydrates. And you're getting a decent amount of zinc. And it's also very sustainable because you're not eliminating entire food groups. So I'm going to put that at the very top of A tier. A Mediterranean diet is very, very good. And it's also scientifically proven. Or I should say it has been shown scientifically to be one of the healthiest diets in the world. But there are some new ones to that and some caveats, which I'll discuss in future videos. Next, we have a modified keto diet, which is really what the Atkins diet is. Right. So it's pretty much a keto diet with a little room for carbohydrates the longer you stay on the diet. So I'm going to put it in B tier. It's the same as I explained earlier. Good amounts of protein, good amounts of fats, but the removal of an entire group, which is carbohydrates, is not ideal. Next, we have carb backloading. So let's see, you're getting plenty of protein, you're getting fats in the earlier part of the day, you're getting vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, you're getting a lot of carbohydrates, obviously post-workout, you're getting enough zinc as long as you structure your diet correctly, and it is sustainable. So I'm going to put that in S tier, mainly because when it comes to testosterone, insulin sensitivity is everything, right? You cannot mess around with your insulin sensitivity. If you become insulin resistant, everything shuts down, including testosterone production. And with call back loading, not only are you getting all your key nutrients, but you are also paying attention to timing, Timing matters, guys. Eating a big carbohydrate meal right after the gym is not the same as eating a big carbohydrate meal early in the morning or right before bed. The blood sugar response is night and day. Next, if it fits your macros. So pretty much you can eat anything you want as long as it fits your macros, right? Bullshit. So let's see. You're getting enough protein. You're getting enough fats. You're getting enough carbohydrates. But you're not getting enough vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. You're not getting enough zinc, although it is sustainable. So I'm going to put that one in b tier the if it fits your macros diet is extremely low in micronutrients which leads to insulin resistance oxidative stress and a whole bunch of issues down the line last but not least you have a balanced diet so that's a diet that gives you plenty of high quality animal protein plenty of high quality fats including saturated fats monounsaturated fats omega-3s plenty of vitamins minerals antioxidants plenty of nutrient-dense carbohydrates so that's quinoa potatoes right? You're getting your fiber, you're getting your pre and probiotics, your fruits, your veggies, plenty of zinc, and it's sustainable because it's balanced. That's going to go at the very top of S tier. If you want to maximize testosterone production, a balanced diet is the best diet for you. But again, experiment and see what works. All right, guys, hope this video helps. The new testosterone ebook is finally out, how to increase testosterone in 30 days. Check it out. Make sure you use the discount code and I appreciate you guys for supporting the channel. I'm out of here.